Wow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How can we pass by God's Word and not eat on it and not absorb it and not hear it? Not, not, we can almost hear it with our ears, hearing it with our heart. Psalm 4, the Psalm of David, an evening prayer of trust in God. One that you can lay down and go to sleep. And and after after eating on it a bit and and meditate on the Lord and close your eyes and uh, pull the uh, quilt right over the top of your head and be enveloped in light be enveloped in the light of God now, when you commune with God with your whole heart you, you first let me tell you what you must first do you must get your body clean of outside entities I don't know if it's possible it wasn't with me Back when I smoked and I first got saved, it wasn't possible with me to have what I have now that I've given up the smoking. And that I've given my life completely to God. You say, why are you using that phrase of smoking? That's one thing. Deceit in your life. If you're a deceitful person, you have to get rid of that. You have to get rid of all of the things in your life that are contrary to God. Are you saying, Brother Peter, it's possible to live perfect? I'm saying it's possible to live perfect spiritually. You will have problem with your body. What is the answer for that? God forgive me. I did it again. God forgive me. I did it again. God forgive me. I did it again. And during a, a month or two that you're trying to develop that clean spiritual body and staying in the Word, you will work on things. Just when you think, well, man, I got that, that out of the way now. And then uh, you're around somebody and they say, what is that word you're using? I spoke to one of my very best, very best friends the other day. He had a, a, a little word in his life. He'd been saved a long time. Had a little word in his life that started with D that he, uh, every now and then, quite often, I'd hear him say it. And I'd say, hey, do you realize that you're saying that word, that word that holds water back, and you're using it in a, a bad, bad way. And he said, "Am I?" I said, "Yes, you are. It's there, and and uh, you need to work on that. Uh, you're telling people about God, and you're using a word that doesn't fit in that that type of script. That word, see, in that place, you can use it when you're talking about holding back water. <laughs> and the other time, it's it's not good. And he said, "Well, I I'll work on that. I'll work. I didn't realize that." Well, you know, we all have those things in our life that somebody else would notice. You say, well, it's such a small thing. In a way, it is. In another way, it isn't. Because if you're the living example or the living epistle for somebody who's just came in and they're growing in the Lord, it could offend them. So... Let's get back in here. Uh, the Psalm of David, an evening prayer of trust. Trust. That, trust. I have 100% trust in my bank. I will tell you this. Even though I put 100% trust in my bank, I can't put 1,000% trust in my bank like I do the Bible. Because I find that uh, lately they've been, the, the uh, stations have been talking about banks and things that have overcharged on 
little bitty things like five dollars a month for this and five dollars a month for that or twenty dollars a month for this or that and it's been on the account for a while and you you're paying that and you have they have no reason for that it covers their slackness but we don't want to get into the world system but the world system we can't carry with us when we get in the spiritual system so listen to this hear me there's no period there but he said hear me when I call O God of my righteousness you have enlarged me when I was in distress have mercy upon me and hear my prayer and now David's writing this in the Bible in Psalm chapter 4 this can be my very call for today my call uh, this psalm was composed by David on the same occasion Psalm 3 was when Absalom rebelled against David and David cried to the Lord likewise the Lord Jesus cried to God in the same manner when the scribes and Pharisees in the spirit of Absalom came against him what happened in the Old Testament was re enact in the New Testament by another whole group of people different people so we see it is a spirit of opposition against God come up in a religiously looking way it looks religious it looks like it's something good and it's not it's not doing what it's supposed to do O oh, ye sons of men how long will you turn my glory into shame how long will you love vanity and seek after leasing Selah the word Selah in a sign means stop and the second word is muse what is muse musing is studying what you just read go back over what you just read word for word if you have to take a dictionary and look up every word in the verse and see how positive those words are how deep that well is the meaning of each word is a well how deep is that well how much water can you draw from that word from that word that's in that that is that well what can you draw from that the word oh oh that's the beginning that is a explanation that is a big fat oh oh and then ye sons of men who are they that's us we are the sons of men my I had a father I am the son of a man how long will you turn my glory into shame now he's saying you are my son too in other words I'm one of those that have said Jesus forgive me I'm a sinner come into my heart and save my soul and now I'm his son and he can ask me a question the question can be uh, from my God of righteousness who is my father my question can be uh, you have enlarged me when I was in distress that means he brought me through a place of distress and have mercy on me and hear my prayer now you brought me through it now help me to accept it and to walk in it is what he's saying here this psalm was composed by David on the same occasion as Psalm 3 when Absalom was rebelling as David cried to the Lord likewise and, and listen to this now we have a likeness in the Old Testament writing here of a New Testament action the Lord Jesus cried to God the same manner which the scribes and Pharisees in the, in the spirit of Absalom came against him and see when Jesus came here he was not accepted he was 
he was railed on, he was uh, spit on, he was he was even bodily abused as, as well as spiritually. Verse two, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing, sila? Leasing means lying. Woo we. You are looking right now at the biggest lie you ever saw in your life. I was the champion of champion a champion of liars when I was a kid. And I have to watch myself even now. I'm 78 years old. Been saved since 1972. That tongue right there can be like the split tongue of a serpent. It can tell a lie. It can tell an untruth. It can tell almost truth. It can tell all kinds of things if you do not watch it. So, O oh, sons of men, how long will my glory be turned into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? So, see, Absalom was a, a son of David, and he was in rebellion. And he was in that rebellion against his father. And the scribes and Pharisees rebelled against Christ in the New Testament. Christ came along, scribes and Pharisees says, we're not having you, we're not believing you. Jesus said, I am the Messiah walking in the flesh. I am God in the flesh. I was placed in a virgin by my father. And I was born on this earth. I have walked 30 years on this earth, 33 altogether, sinless, with no, not one speck of sin on me. No, you can't count one speck. God sent me to prove that a man could walk on this earth sinless. How does he have to do that? He has to stay under himself. He has to clean his life up. He has to clean his head up. He has to clean his heart up. He has to clean his ways up and follow God. How do you do that? It's not easy. It, once you first get going, once you get going, it becomes easier and easier. God will smite you very quickly if you do something that he's not happy with. So you have to be careful. Listen to verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him who is godly for himself. And the Lord will hear when I call unto him. What brought me? I'm all the way up into Psalm 30 on my regular daily uh, speaking on Psalms. And I had to drop back today and get in Psalm 4 to get myself straightened out so that I can uh, get back up into Psalm 30, 31 and the other Psalms. So I had to come back down here and take a look and say, where do I need refreshing? This is where I need refreshing. It's like dying of thirst and need a drink of water. See, I'm dying for proper righteousness. I want proper righteousness. I have to kill myself daily to have the righteousness of God. And I get it from his book. Stand in awe. Man, what a sentence that is. That's like if you all of a sudden saw a plane in the air start flipping over and headed toward the ground. You would be in awe. Your mouth would be open. And you'd say, oh, what just happened? That's like being in the Bible. These words are like a plane flying. And in and, and, and awe, you need to be in awe of the words of what they say. And sin not. He said, stand in awe and sin not. You might be the plane that's tumbling, that's coming down. You're going to have to work on that so that doesn't happen to you. Listen to what he said. 
commune your, in your own heart upon your own bed and be still. Selah. That means when you're on your bed, stop. Go to bed and think, well, I'm going to go to bed and go right to sleep. No. You lay down in that bed, you thank the Lord for it. You say, Lord, thank you. <laughs> oh, man, I say it too. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this bed. Whew. Did I need this? I need this bed right now. Thank you for this bed. I really thank you, Lord, too, for this mattress, for this comfort. I thank you for this quilt in this cool house. I thank you for these things. And, and then talk with the Lord about the day. Talk with the Lord about the night. Ask Him for a good, quick rest. Maybe uh, sleep four hours and say, Lord, I need eight hours and four hours, please. Well, if you've communed with Him and you have peace in your heart, and you can get it. In four hours, you're wide awake. Say, well, you know, that just doesn't seem like enough. Say, think I lay here a bit. And the Lord said, you asked me for four solid hours of sleep. I gave it to you. Now get up. Go to work. <laughs> do what you're supposed to do. And so that's it. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. What is the sacrifice right here in righteousness and what I just got done saying? Is that I prayed, he answered, and now what is the sacrifice? Get on the tube. Get up. Take a shower, I which I did this morning. I didn't shave, but I took a shower. Dressed my hair, dressed my clothes, worked on my legs that are being worked on a, a soul. Off of the sacrifice of righteousness. In effect, Jesus is saying that he counsels the Pharisees to continue with their own hearts, to be silent in true conversation, and to offer righteous sacrifice and not vain obligation. Do you know what vain obligation to an average Christian today is? Is to live for the devil all week, or pretty much of the week. You don't talk to people about God. You don't say anything about being a Christian. You actually use products that a Christian shouldn't use. And people know that. People that are not saved know the minute that you use and, and you're doing something that's not of God. They know that. If you're doing the same thing they're doing, and they're fixing it all up, and you say, hey, let me have one of them. And you light up too. You just killed your testimony. 100%. Just like taking a, a, a big, big nail and a hammer that's too small to drive that nail and hit that nail. And you can hit on it for, from now on with that little bitty hammer and it's not going to drive that big nail in the ground but it's always going to be sticking up there that big in the way. That's what having a little sin in your life is. It's like a big nail sticking up there. And, and people know it. And it causes you to be ineffective. Ineffective said here, Jesus is saying that he counseled with the Pharisees to commune with their own heart, to be silent in true conversation, and to offer righteous sacrifice and not vain obligation. Can you commune with your own heart? Can you say, I need to clean this one up. I need to clean this up. I need to clean this up. You know why I don't have television in my house? I can't trust myself. I cannot trust myself. I like a western. Sometimes I like an action movie. But if I watch those, I will pick up things that will hurt me spiritually. So I have to be careful of what I watch and what I do. Other than sometimes 
when I've, I've been studying, 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 preaching, working, preaching, working, studying, and I just want to sit down and relax. So now I have some VCR tapes, old ones, of the Bible and people acting it out in Acts and Matthew. And every time I can find some, I buy them and I put them in my VCR and watch those religiously to stay in communion with God. Staying in communion with God, that's important. All right. There are many who say we will show us and there be many who say who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Woo. Where do you find the light of God's countenance? If you've got his countenance, that means you've got his presence. Where is his presence today? The only way it's in you, if you've got it in you through this book. If you studied this book, and you've said, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. And you want his presence. He will come and sup with you and you with him when you're in his book. He, This is his dinner plate. He sets it before you. You can eat all you want. You can eat the solid food and you can eat the dessert. You can eat the singing, the signs, and you can eat what says... You had to say, oh me, I missed the mark on that. Lord, help me. It, the more you're in his book, the closer you can get to him. Verse 7. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the time that the corn and the wine increased. See, David's writing this in a day when... Boy, it was something to have a good crop of corn. It was something that you'd had a good crop of grapes and the wine increased. Many, many, many people read the Bible. When they read wine, they automatically think of alcohol. The water over there in Israel just is not fit to drink. I mean, you'd have had to have been born there and be a camel just about to drink the water. The water has a, a very awkward taste to it. It's like going to Florida and trying to drink a sulfur water. It makes you gag. And so they drank grape juice. It didn't have to be fermented. Fresh grape juice. We get it all the time. I buy it in the store. Welch's grape juice. It's juice that's not been turned into wine. So when you're talking about grape juice, you're not talking oh, talking about wine. You're talking about new wine. New wine is not fermented. When Jesus made the big firkins of wine, he said, fill them with water. And, I, and then he turned them into wine. And the king said, this is the best wine. Is you are something to keep the best wine to last. See, because it was new wine. It was fresh wine. It didn't have to be alcohol. It didn't have to be something to make you drunk. And so uh, that's what it is. The greater blessings are spiritual rather than material. That's the greater blessing. Verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For you, Lord, only make me dwell in safety. The Lord makes me dwell in safety. I do not have to fear because I have the Lord watching over me. It said, even in the face of uh, acute trouble, David did, and the Lord likewise lay down in perfect peace and went immediately to sleep. For he was the prince and the perf perfecter of faith in Luke 21, 37 and, and 38. Do you know when Jesus was walking across this country for three years, 
But the marauders over there, I, I, there are more marauders than there are Christians for sure. They hide behind rocks. They get bands together, eight or ten or twelve of them. And they'll come out, a little group like Jesus was walking across there. And they'll kill them. They'll knock them all out and take all of their clothes, strip their bodies and leave them naked. The body be laying there naked. And they take all of their clothes. And they do, they do things. And they'll go into a town and they'll sell all those clothes they got. And they live that way. And they're all over the place over there. You or I would not probably stand a chance. Uh, not a chance. It'd be like standing in a hailstorm and not getting hit with a piece of hail. To think that you could go over there and walk two miles out across there in one of those roads over there, the road to Jericho or whatever, and not be accosted. You will be accosted. You have to watch all the time. When we were there on, on one, a tour, you had to watch everything. You had to watch your camera. You had to watch everything you had all the time. There was always hands around there that would reach in there and get what you've got and run off with it. And so you had to really be uh, attentive. I'm not talking bad about Jerusalem. Go to New York City. Walk down the street. See if you don't get you some kind of eerie feeling. You've got hands and people everywhere. And and it wouldn't take but to, uh, one of them, a bad enough one, to take you by himself. But when the whole group gets around you and says, look, strip. Strip. Are you going to die? You, got, you better strip. You'll be standing there in your underwear if they let you keep it. And, and, and then they'll be laughing and taking your stuff and walking off with it and your wallet, and your driver's license, and everything you own. You're going to be, un today you need to be under the protection of God. Physically, you need to be under the protection of God. Spiritually, you need to be under the protection of God. Our time has just about had it right here. But I needed to go over this psalm again this morning, for me. I'm not going over this psalm again today, excuse me. I said morning today I had to go over this psalm again today for me whatever time of day it is I had to go over it for me I needed it I needed to reaffirm reaffirm that I'm in fellowship in tune with God like a horn in a band I can think about a tuba, a tuba, boom, boom, but that tuba is only supposed to boom when it's supposed to boom. When that music says, bring a tuba in, and the tuba goes, boom, boom, and it does what it does, and then it don't do no more. It just stays there until it's called upon, and that's what we're supposed to do. We stay in the Word until we're called upon, and then when we're called upon to make the sound we're supposed to make when we're supposed to make it. Not any other time. You make the sound when you're supposed to make it. And ask God to lead, guide you, and direct you. You may say, wow, Pete, you just got the bull by the tail. You got a house paid for and you got just everything you need. I can tell you this. Sometimes the Lord allows you to get to a place where you haven't got enough gas to leave the yard and don't have any money to buy any with. That happens. And when it does, you can't let that disturb your peace. <laughs> you still got the peace. You still got the roof over your head. Just don't move. Just stay where you are and don't move. Just stay there and do what you're doing. Keep your study up, keep your work up, and keep going. Well, our time has come and gone, and we're going to get ready to uh, say goodbye. And I hope that you can take some of what's been said and use it in your own life. 
We'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.